Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey. Good morning, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, y'all. Yes, it is Thursday. Um, I was supposed to post yesterday. And the truth is, I sat in prayer and I sat in meditation and I kept waiting for whatever God's word was going to be. And I did not hear a word. Like all morning, I sat at my coffee table, I mean, at my dining room table with my coffee. And it's just like, okay, God, what do you have for me? Um, And I waited and I prayed and I listened and nothing, right? And, um, you know, I had to get to work. And so, like, throughout my day, I was like, okay, God, whenever you give it to me, like, I'll just steal away some time and, you know, I'll just put it together, Lord. What do you have for me? What do you have for me? What do you have for me? What do you have for me, right? And nothing, 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 right? I went through the whole day and nothing. And so this morning I got up and I was just like, okay, God, I'm supposed to post. I know that sometimes God just does not have a word for me. Sometimes what he gives me is for me. Sometimes what, you know, you've heard me and Lindsay share that like, oh, that was for us. That wasn't for nobody else. Sometimes that is the situation, but You know, I want to be obedient to my commitment, and so I was just waiting, and I was waiting, and I was waiting, and so this morning, same thing, right? I get up, I'm in my praise and worship, I'm drinking my coffee, you know, like, okay, God, what do you have for me? Like, I'm just going to stay present, I'm going to be prayerful, I'm going to be mindful, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. So here I am with a word from God that just had me so excited when I got it. As y'all can see, I am in my car. I am on the side of the freeway. It was like, boop, in my spirit. And I was like, I can't wait till I get to the office. What if there's not a space available? Like, I need to pull over right now. I need to be obedient right now in this moment. I need to get this out of me because, oh, my gosh. So just take a moment with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Father God, thanking you, Lord Jesus, for another day that you have given, Father. Another day that you have created that is unlike any other day, Father God, any other space that we have occupied, Father God. We are present today, Lord Jesus, in your presence, Father God, asking for you to come into this space, Lord Jesus, and feel this faith, Father God, with your presence and your spirit, Lord, that the words that come from my mouth, Father God, be the intentions of your heart, Father God, be exactly what it is that you have for the people to receive, Father God. I thank you so much, Father God, for a willingness of obedience, Father God, for a practice of discipline, Father God, to learning for learning to wait when you say wait, Father God, and for knowing to act, Father God, when you say right now, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this opportunity, Father God. I ask that your blessing, your grace, your mercy be a covering up over every head and every ear that hears the sound of my voice right now, Father God. I thank you so much, and I praise you, Lord, in the matchless name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, y'all, listen. Oh, I'm so excited. So, on my morning travels this morning, I was coming in to the city. I'm on my way to the office, and um, I was listening to a podcast, and, you know, I'm just like, do to do to do right? Spill my coffee. do to do to do driving along, minding my own business, listening to the podcast, and, y'all, this freeway action out here in Tennessee, y'all, is such... It's funny because the only reason people out here experience traffic, I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred more times, is because it's a long stretch of freeway, right? But the exits are few and far between, right? You may go two miles before you get to another exit. So if there's a traffic accident or if something happens in one of the lanes then and you're in between exits, then you kind of stuck, right? Until you can, like, scoot your way to the next exit, you are kind of stuck. And in the meantime, sometimes, you know, you have the experience where you're not really paying attention or you kind of get humdrum about, like, being alert and aware while you're on the freeway. And, you know, it can cause some traffic issues. And so most mornings on my way in, I listen to podcasts. I have learned that when I'm getting frustrated that things are not going fast enough, I've taken this practice in, right, y'all? I look to my left and I look to my right. And sometimes I don't have a left and a right option, but wherever there is another vehicle, right, I look, 
to them and then I just offer prayer. Father God, cover that car, cover that family, protect them as they go across their day. Lord, I just pray, pray the blood of your grace and your mercy and your peace over their lives. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Right? Real simple. And I've learned to do that because I don't know what nobody else is going through. Right? We are all going through stuff. And sometimes the stuff that I am going through is the stuff of my own making because I was trying to shortcut something and I made a mess of it. And then um, me trying to undo the mess made a bigger mess because I didn't want to admit that I had made the mess originally. Right? Right? I'm sure ain't none of y'all had that problem, but listen, so this morning, y'all know I'm coming from a scripture, so let me just pop my little scripture up real quick for y'all real quick. It's Genesis chapter 34, right? I'm going to read 24, 25, and 26. Um, Let me get there one time real quick, y'all. Let me just see how did I get there the first time so that I can get back there. Um, Okay, here we go. And it says, all the men who went out, verse 24, all the men who went out of the city gate agreed with Hammer and his son Shechem, and every male in the city was circumcised. Three days later, while all of them were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took their swords, attacked the unsuspecting city, killing every male. They put Hammer and his son Shechem to the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and left. Okay, that's deep, y'all, right? So what we read right here, right? Hold on, let me open that back up real quick. What we read right here is Shechem, right, raggedy, ratchet, Really, just a man, like most men, saw something he wanted. It wasn't his. He wasn't supposed to have it. That something was Dinah. He took it, right? Um, Shechem raped Dinah. He has deflowered her, broken her covenant. She can no longer marry a Hebrew man. Her father, Jacob, her son, her brothers, Levi and Simeon, are upset about it. They go to Shechem. They're angry, right? Shechem feels guilt and remorse for what he has done, right? Clearly, he has made a mess. He has made a mess, and in the making of that mess, he makes things messier, right? In a very grave way for everybody involved, right? So in the making of his mess, he admits that he was wrong, right? He admits that he's wrong, but he admits that he was wrong to the wrong people, Not like that, right? Yes, there was an apology that was due. I'm not getting into the politics of that, right? This is the story that I'm painting for you, right? So Shechem goes, or Jacob and Simeon and Levi come, and Shechem basically tells them, whatever it is that I need to do to make this right, I am willing to make this right. I will marry Dinah. I will give you part of my land. We can blend our family. You will own what I own. I want to make this right. Tell me what I need to do, right? So the sons, right? Not even Jacob, the father, because it should be father to father speaking, but that's not what it is. The sons step up and they say, okay, you need to go into covenant with our God. Now, they do not necessarily uh, believe in, right, the God that Jacob, Levi, and Simeon believe in, right? A whole different background, but because Shechem is so, he feels so bad, right, for what he has done, they're like, you need to get circumcised. If everybody gets circumcised, then we're cool. So Shechem says, all right, bet. So Shechem orders every man, every man, to get circumcised. And they all get circumcised so that Shechem can have Dinah and these two families can merge, right? And y'all, y'all already know, it's a mess, right? While Shechem and all of the men in that land are recovering from this very painful procedure, I'm sure back in those days, it was not as simple as as the 
process that we know today. It was probably a lot more painful. I don't have any experience with it, but it was probably a lot more painful and, and caused a lot more discomfort back then. Um, but while they're recovering, right, they're in the third day of recovery, Levi and Simeon come in and kill everybody, right? And then they go to Shechem and his son, and they kill both of them, and they take Dinah, right? Here's my word today, y'all. There have been times where I have made a decision, and that decision created a mess in my life. Many times, whether that decision has been something as basic as I know I got to pay this bill, but I really want to buy these shoes, so I'm going to buy these shoes and just pay the late payment on this bill, right? Um, Sometimes, you know, the decision, um, there are those of us who have made the decision, I am in this covenant and this commitment and this relationship, and something over in that pasture over there looks good to me. So I'm just going to step out of this commitment that I'm in. I'm going to go over into that pasture. I'm going to have a little bit of that, and I'm going to come back here, right? And it makes a mess of the relationship that I'm in, right? There have been times I can recall being very, very young, right, and making a very adult decision that I'm grown, I'm going to go out, I'm going to do my own thing, I'm going to live my own life. I've actually got a kid that's having that I'm grown experience right now, right? I get out there, I don't know nothing about being grown, I don't know nothing about adulting, and it seems like everything I do just creates a bigger mess in my life, right? For me particularly, like, I made all kinds of wrong decisions, I had all kinds of bad turns and bad experiences, and it seems like every time I touched something, the mess just got messier. And that is what has happened here, right? Shekha made a mistake a very devastating mistake that ended up costing him his life and the life of every man in his camp. And um, we have all been there, right? We have all made the decisions that have devastated the lives that we have created and built around us because we acted on our own accord, right? I want to tell you that on Friday we were talking about when we're making decisions, making sure that we are including God in the decisions that we are making. There is no truer statement that has ever been said. Including God in the decisions that I am making. When I want to make this decision, when I want to make this purchase, when I want to wear this outfit, when I want to make this decision, when I want to eat this meal, like everything I do, God should be included in that because this this world that we live in today, y'all, is no respecter of persons. It does not care about what my goals are and what my hopes are and what my aspirations are. It doesn't care who I'm assigned to be, who I'm titled to be, who I believe that I am. This world out here is a dog-eat-dog world. And without God, we are doomed to fail. Every mess that I make just gets messier. Everything that I do just becomes more murky and more muddy. And my experience with making decisions Even when I make a decision and I make the wrong decision, when I turn to God and I ask God for forgiveness, right, the place where Shechem went wrong was he went to the person that he wronged, to her family, right, and he asked for their forgiveness and he tried to make it right with them. And that is how this whole situation ended up getting messier. I wonder what would have happened if now that Shechem is circumcised, he's in covenant with God, if he would have stepped out on faith and began to build that relationship with the God that he had the covenant with, what would that have been like? What would the outcome have been that would have been different? 
And I'm sure that there are plenty of times in our lives where we wonder, man, if I had done this instead of that, what would that have been like, right? Let me tell you, James 1 and 5 tells us that if you lack wisdom, ask God, right? Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing but in everything do it by prayer, right? Jeremiah 29 and 11. Oh my gosh, I love this. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. God has a plan for us. And if we just surrender our actions to him every day, God will remind us that like, no child, I have a plan for you. No, you don't need to do that. It's going to get greater later. My problem in that is I struggle with the patience to stay in God's will. I want hurry up right now. I want to see it right now. I want to feel it right now. I want to experience it right now. I want all the blessings right now, right? There's another story we'll talk about um, in the Bible about that, right? Wanting my blessings right now. Y'all know the, the, the story of the prodigal son, right? Oh, my God, that is my life almost every day, right? I want my blessing right now, and then I get my blessing, and I run off, and I squander it, and I come back with nothing. I'm like, oh, my God, how can you ever forgive me? I make my mess messier. The word that I have for you is this. Start today. Start right now. God, I turn my will and my life over to you to your care and your direction and your guidance, Father God, that everything that I do, Father God, be pleasing to you. Show me, Father God, in every meal that I eat, every conversation that I have, every engagement that I entertain, Father God, every left turn and every right turn, Father God. Show me according to your will, Father, what it is that you would have me do. I thank you so much, Father God, for your guidance and your direction over my life. Father God, I pray this prayer for every ear that is listening, Father. There is a heart out there, Lord, that is looking to you right now for guidance, for guidance in an experience they're having, Father, for guidance in a decision that they feel pressured to make, Father God, for guidance in a relationship, Father God, and they are not sure if they are supposed to stay or if they are supposed to go, Father God. I petition you right now, Lord Jesus, to show up in their lives in a very clear and present way, Father God that they may not be confused anymore, Lord God. I thank you so much, Father, for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. I thank you so much, Father, for your presence that I see manifested every day. I praise you and I pray pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Listen, y'all have an amazing day. I'm going to get on off this freeway and I'm going to head to work. I love y'all with the heavenly love of Christ. Go out there and make today great. Be blessed, y'all.